Hi guys, Ox the Vegan Gamer. We're playing Bayonetta. And let's move on forward. Well, this place looks pretty good. I can lift this? <laughs> That's well done. Ooh, food stand. I wonder if Bayonetta is vegan. I wonder if she's food. She almost looks like a vampire. Bullets right here. Or another book. Oh, you guys! <laughs> I'm gonna round up reading again. Notes on the topic of magic one. The word witch usually conjures up images in her head of an old woman using strange magic. But peruse the history of Vigrid and you find a vastly different picture of incredibly brave women who once inhabited the area. They were known as the Umber Witches. While these witches are said to have manipulated magic, there remains very little recorded history to back these claims. Yet they shared many powers with their opposing counterparts, the Lumen Sages, and from their records, we can gather a better view of what magic entailed. As overseers of history, they possess the ability to literally see everything in an instant, also known as temporal control. That's probably what Bayonetta's necklace does. Okay, let me continue reading. This technique sharpened all of the five senses and pushed one's emotional energy to its very limits. It is a world where a falling drop of water can become a crown and a hummingbird slowly and elegantly flaps its wings. Temporal control is not just simply being able to recognize this world, it also enables one to boost their physical abilities and move freely within that single moment. Temporal control requires a sound body and mind and complete grasp of spirit energy. While quite similar, the witches and sages each practice this art differently leading to different names for their respective techniques. Witch time and light speed. So I guess the dark part is witch time, and light speed is obviously the light, I guess the angels. Witch time. It seems that witches on the surf fell victim to our world's passage of time and vanished into the abyss of eternity. Not anymore! I'm here, <laughs> Bayonetta, to kick some butt. All right, let's exit. Yeah. What is that, Assassin's Creed? <laughs> it reminds me of Assassin's Creed. Video game where the guy kind of climbs up walls and hides. Oh, he's a cutie. <laughs> huh. Has a little European look to him. Do you believe in fate? Fate brought us here together, and it will never tear us apart. What a Casanova. A clumsy one. Oh, how cute. I want to fly with too. Fuck. Where'd that bugger go? I think I said fuck. Huh. He has Batman techniques. He grappled to go up walls. Sayonara. Fleur de cire eau de parfum. That's French. It's a wonderful floral bouquet. With its 
Subtle hints of rosemary. You know, in the language of flowers, rosemary equates to remembrance. <laughs> Which doesn't quite equate to you, now does it? Bayonet! Shit! Will you stop that? That little Vagonenza was a nice touch. Seeing you here, I suppose it wasn't the only one. You certainly knew the character of my little Cheshire puss. She's I'm messing with his head. Pet. The name is Luca. A name you better remember. He looks a little bit like one of my French friends from France. I'm from Canada, for you guys that Damn don't know. It. Wait! You can't just run away from me like that! I know what I saw that day! What did he see? Bernetta killed his dad. Sure, my colleagues laugh at me for chasing fairy tales, amongst other things. But I know they're real. I know the truth. All right, monster fight. Let's kick some butt. The smell. the same smell that clung to the air the day my father was murdered. Which means I'm right on your doorstep, Bayonetta. I'll let you in on a little secret, Cheshire. The name is Luke. You need to hone your sense of smell, my dear. There's no rosemary in the perfume. After all, rosemary is a demon repellent. It's bad in that one way. Don't you touch me. He did touch me this time around. Which time? Oh, big guy. Oops. Out of the way, Bayonetta. Oh, that was a miss. There we go. I can't see a thing. I prefer to be one behind his back. Is he dead yet? He needs to concentrate more. Did he fleeing me? Where did he go? Oh, probably should have 
tried to kill him and have him fall down to the floor. Oh well. You only run away so fast because you've got something to run from. Me! But you can't escape me forever. <laughs> I'm right behind you. Eau de parfum means water perfume. Uh, that wasn't very good. I just got silver. Oh well. Still very entertaining. Oh, pick this up. No, I prefer the other weapon. Here. Yeah, I probably shouldn't be dead. I'm rather losing my uh, my pole. I'm just pole dancing. They've installed classic telephones so as to not disrupt the ambience of the area. Oh, that's nice. Closing of the gate in sync with the streetcars. I guess it's called a streetcar. Some sort of train. Yeah. Whoa! Just in the nick of time. Inventors of blood. So this is a monster called an enchant. Wow, how's I supposed to dodge that? Give it a kiss. I got silver. That's all good. Can I go inside? I don't think so. Alright, let's move on. That was one cool action scene. People in the real real world must be wondering like why everything is breaking off. Oh, you guys, I'm gonna be reading again. Notes on the topic of magic, too. In the rigorous pursuit that are the magical arts, one method is said to have caused countless deaths during training, witch walk. To the umber witches, 
it seems which walk was truly indispensable. Taking their power from the moon, this band of witches were able to draw on the power and reaching qualities of moonlight to execute high-level techniques. However, recordings state that Witch Walk was powered by a pact with a particular powerful demon who would grant the power to break gravity's bond and not by the more common moonlight source. As no further records remain as to the nature of this technique, any more hard facts remain unknown. However, by looking at the traces left on the buildings around Vigrid, one can make a some further assumption. The traces are, in fact, footprints left on the surface of the wall. They blend into the city so well that you almost never catch a glimpse of them at first glance. In fact, those without knowledge of Wish Walk would probably never notice the footprint's presence. Amongst the dirt and scars of the surface, there are many buildings and big grid where footprints sporadically continue along their sides. This must be none other than proof that these magic practitioners were able to literally walk on walls. Oh, I can walk on walls when there's moonlight. Many of these buildings where the witches have left their mark are truly strange. There are doors in unbelievably high locations of the buildings. Many may lack a path to the entrance entirely, rejecting all intruders and living a life of solitude. Witch walk was not just a training technique for the Umber Witches, it was a shield that protects their way of life. Super cool. I'm glad to have Witch Walk. Too bad it only works at night, because I could walk up the walls here. Alright, well that's what the car does. I can throw it at enemies. Kick your butt literally. With my high heels. Where are all the other monsters? Oh, this big guy again. See the same guy as earlier? Oh, there his friend. There's gonna be two of them? I guess I should probably get rid of the one with least amount of energy. Great doggy, beat him up. Five hundred is good. That is some crazy here. I got a gold medal. That's pretty good. I'm glad about that. And no damage. Kazi Yuna Fantasia. A golden LP featuring the crystallized voices of angels. Some sort of silhouette is drawn upon the surface. It looks like a music CD. Like those old CDs. Is there a hidden area here somewhere? Well, I don't know, but I'm gonna move on. Am I going the right way? I'm not too sure. I think so. Let's go have a look at the view. 
I'm gonna go get the book first. About the Umbra Witches one. Witches were ones of talent. That is my impression after years of exhaustive research into the Umbra. The word witches triggers within us all prejudices towards the paranormal or the supernatural. However, in this ancient city of Vicriad, the magical arts were a systematic form of scholarship. Of course, what I have learned about witches will be labeled as fraud by the world at large, or undoubtedly dismissed as nonsense. I will begin these notes with items I have confirmed to be absolute facts in regard to witches. Due to their lack of contact with the outside world, we often feel that witches were strictly hereditary order. However, this was not always the case. For one to become a witch, one must first and foremost possess incredible spirit energy. Those with the power could become witches despite being of low birth and those without power would be forced into a secular life, regardless of any blood ties to a witch clan. Naturally, children born within a clan were often quick to grasp the concept of magic due to the environment around them, allowing their innate abilities to bloom at much earlier age. Coming to grasp with the concept must have inspired one to further hone their spirit energy. These children were also able to participate in extensive drills with other witches, and only those who had shown great promise and achievement were able to take their witch vows prior to passage into womanhood. The exact nature of spirit energy remains unclear, although recognizing its existence within oneself and refining the style and further was the one true path to produce a witch of great ability. Alright, hey, I'll have to check those, but I'm gonna go save first. Okay, you guys, don't forget to save the animals, pick some monsters, but, and I will see you in the next video. I'm gonna go save at the gates of hell. Another LP? <laughs> Working me to the bone. But no need to pity me. I was bored anyways. Let me go whip some things into shape for you. Took a bit of pound into shape, but the workmanship's solid. Now, go put this thing to good use. Shruba. All right, I'll take that weapon. Let's add more techniques. Let's add all of them. I'm not being very reasonable, but you know what? Whatever. Yeah. 